Welcome in, Guardians. Welcome to another Moon Day mini podcast with myself, Alexis of Ascension Diaries. In this episode, I'm going to review some of the deities and energies that I experienced today for this beautiful Cancer Moon Day and hopefully get your wheels turning and give you a little bit of a ASMR experience here. So let us continue. This episode is brought to you by me and the personal coaching that I'm opening up for those who are interested right now. You can go to my website, ascensiondiaries.com, go into the booking section and book your free consultation call with me so we can see if we're a good fit. You can also visit the coaching page to see what the current offer is. And also, if you have more offers to give me, I'm always open to that because this is a community thing. Let us continue into today's episode. So I was going to attempt recording this with my new headphones, which are the normal iPhone headphones, to see how the quality was. And the birds got really mad out here in the little tropical oasis of Sedona that I currently reside in and worship in, worship creation. And this podcast has been formed by this little location that I'm in where it's like this little mini heaven where the little fairy garden is right ahead of me and everybody talks to me over here. So I would like to talk to you as well, but they are also pulling me over here to do this podcast in this spot specifically because of what, whatever interjections are necessary. And they need me to just be without the recording equipment because it does not pick up the, the voices, the other voices in the background. Those headphones, headphone mics are for sure used to just cut out so you can hear very well someone talking on a phone call. But this is an ASMR experience. And speaking of those, I would like to encourage you to continue sending those into the group chats, guardians, to allow people to witness and experience the medicine you're also prescribing yourself. And the messages today from the moon and the cancer moon, I would like to channel that information just for my own amusement. So amuse me. But the cancers in my life are very loyal, loving, and so, so sweet people. But they also can be very fierce and very judgmental. And they can like cut you like, like a knife, like right through your core. They know where your vulnerability is. And when you upset them, it means that you've accessed their vulnerability, which they are usually a little more aware of. And if you can still get to them with whatever it is, it can cause some major pain and hardship between relationships because of that emotional bond that you have with other people. You show them that vulnerability about yourself. And if they would you know, even trudge into those areas that you don't even, you're not even fully aware of, but as someone you love, you tend to not want to aggravate them and let them just enjoy your company and not push on them more than life already will. You know, being at home and being in your safe space, a lot of people believe that you should have that sacred sanctum. And speaking of the sacred sanctum, It exists, of course, within our hearts, within our minds, but there is truly a test of souls going on and the moon is a part of it and it amplifies, it amplifies energy. So the fact that it's going to be a new moon means that it's not as amplified right now, but those medium or low level energies in those fields is still something. It's still its own medicine. On the Schumann resonances on the Russian charts today, there was resonation, or more so last night, I guess for me. I have someone in the Telegram group is in Hungary, uh, but also was in Japan. So they have this 
day and night perspective and they're really good at interacting in the chat shout out to you if you're listening to this <clears throat> i'll tag you in this or i'll send it to you and i'll send it to all of you as i do my best to do so we can all engage in these moments and i can practice channeling and getting more comfortable in a very like easygoing way and the moon's energy amplifies us in medium, low, or high ways. And those all have a different wavelength, a different effect on our DNA, a different effect on our environmental adjustment that we do every single day. Our bodies are constantly taking in information to know how to react and like continue morphing us through this whatever, these fields, all of these particles and beams and waves. And it's a it's a test of mastery, this place. And there's so many things that also can distract you, but you have the choice and capacity and abilities here to still find pockets of these sanctuaries and of these sanctums. And if anything, I really hope that these words are encouraging you to tap into that energy right now. And I can share that energy with you. I see a lot of the green leaves really, really bright. The desert just got a monsoon. Uh, so everything is all soaked, The everybody's glowing, they're just soaking it in I feel like right now. It doesn't look like it's going to soak them tonight, so now it's like time to absorb and grow. So we're getting some true growth I feel like in the trees and in the life here. This is a big drink, they've been waiting for it. I'm assuming the fires, the wildfires nearby also got some of this drink, if, you know, if that was God's will anyways we'll see but the way the mountains curve the energy around here in these canals basically <clears throat> this carved sandstone it kind of moves the energy in the air around a bit so the storms like dance around you're never really sure if it's ever going to wander over to you <laughs> i'm still learning their their movements because it's a little more complicated here it's better to get to higher ground when you see these storms which i've been having to do a ton lately and that's why i believe they also encouraged me to download pokemon go because it encourages me to go outside also and i know a lot of people are going to be upset about that and i'm just like i don't know what it is like i get the heebie-jeebies as good as anyone else truly i do i'm very sensitive which is why i'm truly so confident because i've been right so many times and i'm still here and I've been taking all the same risks and doing all the same things you have with my intuition and only getting better. I'm now taking people on to coach them, personal coaching, because just like I would if I was a gym rat or like lived in a gym or next to a gym, that's what I would be doing for people for sure. I would be working out with them more and exercising because of utilizing the environment, utilizing the equipment. The environment I'm being plum plumped in or... <laughs> what's the word plopped that's the proper word like the drops of rain that are plopping off our roof over here I've been plopped in a specific spot and I've been trying to understand <laughs> the ins and outs the good the bad because it's truly the polarities are just weaving here like oil and water and it's so fascinating but it also is exhausting and so I've had to get some endurance through being plopped here also as Sedona is very famous for needing some endurance of your spirit and of your minerals and energy because they, everything moves quicker here they say so I'm getting a ton of information I feel like funneling into this place that's why I'm placed here because I can perceive it and share it in these ways and I guess these ways are necessary at this time and I believe in all of you and all the ways you're being guided at this time. Just watch the clouds every day. They want me to tell you that. <laughs> and the upper treetops and get to high ground. Get deeper into your instinctual responses to the nature's movements. Watch nature. Listen to it. Watch over the people because they've truly been, in a way, hypnotized to not do these things and I am of course of I'm not going to say victim but I am an experiencer as they say of these particular hypnotisms and 
it still just to this day makes me wonder about the very few occurrences that they actually would bring a hypnotist into a school like my high school assembly for entertainment or like a a banquet for the students I that happened multiple times and I would not be paying attention like I wouldn't be engaging with hypnotism at all I'd be watching what they were doing usually from the very back corner as usual I usually try and get as far away as people so I can watch everybody all at once I've always just done that I just enjoy it better it stimulates my brain the most I just get bored otherwise <laughs> I need way more stuff to look at that's why I love looking at all these dense landscapes and I want to travel and see so many places and people at the pace that my body can handle it and I think I'm getting this endurance now so I can handle it and do those trips I feel that very strongly grounding in a very reliable transport and the confidence and the angels and the guides and the ancestors and the go-ahead whenever it's time but listening to the earth and being outside and absorbing yourself into these little sanctuaries and taking advantage where you are and offering your gifts from what overflows from your particular spot to the rest of the collective is that true economy just like the rain that falls from the sky it's a true economy here everyone's growing and thriving in the in the wash or the monsoon wash or what do they call that the it's a freaking flash flood basically that happens and we've all just situated in this city around flash flooding desert river basin <laughs> it seems and all the animals and everything and it moves slow enough those changes for most of us to just be fine but really <laughs> We're all really risking so much natural disaster living around all these things, these mountains, these trees, these isolated areas, these oceans, these, these fault lines, like there's seriously so much going on and somehow we just, we're fine and we're moving through it so simply. It's never everyone all at once. There's always some way for most people to find safety and support and... <laughs> that's very cancer moon if i could wrap up that long rant but i have to really really go on about the clouds because they're alive like that layer is truly alive there's consciousness in our atmosphere as well as just in the soil gaia's atmosphere is just as so much as part of her as the ground beneath our feet and they call it the upper waters for a reason you know the upper firmament even you could say it's in the bible that the waters it's just different layers of water that we're living in basically <laughs> different densities of water on this planet and yeah it's pretty funny when i start to think about it and then the water tables and the geology and all of that it's just denser and denser light and now I'm hearing that the center of our earth core makes diamonds, which makes Minecraft make so much sense, all these kids, but it's the clouds that are talking to people and you really have to just listen. And as well as the birds, cause they get as close as possible as we all know they're That's why they're so, you know, renowned for their spiritual guidance because the birds, they can just get as close to heaven as possible out of all of us biologically with their form they they can ride those waters up there pretty high some of them can get up there pretty high and look over everyone and get the best perspective of what's really going on and they can also travel greater distances and they have great communities and wow there's a plane just manifested when i was saying that there's another bonus as well as sky watching is that there's truly real craft real craft that are trying to contact you through you it's basically you just projecting into the hologram i think and manifesting these signs for yourself to realize that you're like a piece of it it's all ooh, it's all flowing all at once and people who take psychedelics and so on they experience this because those psychedelics speed them up temporarily i feel like to those frequencies where you can really kind of see the fluidity of everything but our bodies are more dense than that so we can't clock that fast very long which is why you burn out which is why it's always recommended with your shamanism and your medicine work that you take proper breaks 
and nurture yourself properly and be responsible. The internet gives everyone the opportunity to get a lot of opinions and advice before you do any of these things, the good, the bad, the ugly. And usually, no matter what you hear, <clears throat> if it's meant to be, it'll get handed to you. That's how I know it. That's how shamanism found me. Was that, that was the rule. And it's similar with tarot cards, even though now, once you become a teacher, you get to buy your own because now you're a librarian as well. And you need to have a library for your school. And these are just the rules. So in case you were wondering, it's just some of those informations for you too. Again, very cancer. Got to get everything sorted out, organized, going in the right direction, getting some really good ideas, good inspirations. They're super psychic. You don't even need to worry about them because like you literally can just leave a cancer alone, I feel like, and they will totally be fine and psychically be able to navigate everything. So I hope that that was a helpful little tidbit a mini podcast energy dump energy reception as well on my end thank you for your feedback for these trying to make them accessible you can listen to these on any listening podcasting sort of site anchor like shoots it through all those pathways automatically it also has a really cute app that i really like using so i'm enjoying that a lot very much we are going to be having a new moon on thursday the 28th in the sign of leo so our sun is going to be leo the moon is going to be leo <laughs> look at your leo people they are the ones to be loving up on that thursday <laughs> i'm sure and look at where leo is in your own chart if I had to like recall, I had to do my sidereal astrology and my tropical to kind of compare the two because I didn't have some signs on one of them and I was wondering how that was possible in a way. And that's where some of my Leo shows up <laughs> a little bit. But Le Libras and Leos get along very good. They both love beauty and they just have a slightly different angle at it and it's slightly different aggression about it. I'd say Libras are more passive aggressive because they're not trying to, or like passive in general, because usually they know it's going to work out. And I feel like Leos get a little more upset about it <laughs> when it doesn't quite work out and they get a little more vocal or a little bit more prideful maybe about it but you know it's just the sun the sun and the lion energy just going off we have then lion's gate is going to be opening soon i think it's august 5th or something like that we're coming up on these bigger dates the astrologers in the group chats are going to start chatting us up and telling us things so keep your ears and eyes open for that write it down on your calendars these events and how they made you feel journal and diary with me if you are so bold <laughs> it is good for the soul that's what i'm here to help with and final note is i mentioned something about soul signature today and it really rung a bell with a lot of people so i wanted to say that again souls soul signature soul signature and this particular signature is your own i would say je ne sais quoi your own swag like i say now as a young millennial <laughs> i was built to to bridge into the lower generation or the younger generation i was perfectly primed for that we're gonna bring everybody together in new ways and languaging ways but this frequency that's your own you're going to be drawn to specific things. And I just want to remind you that there's literally quadrillion, billion, whatever crazy made up number of opportunities and things to think about and, and research and be interested in on earth and all the languages and so on that we 
some of us can't even, you know, we cannot even really perceive it, so we do not investigate it, but there's knowledge out there, and it's all going to be translated and made easier to access and shared. So much information available. The age of Aquarius truly is great for the intellectual and for the air signs, so they can really pile through all of that information and pick out the good pieces, pick out the pieces that awaken themselves, remind them of their friends, remind them of their families, and access that awareness and that identity in a mirror that existed in history that had some, that had some oomph, that had some swag, that left a mark, that mattered, that had density here as well as karma a lot of it too so some of us will be drawn to these deities and these things that have all this karma attached and then you'll find that for some reason you know during that realization that yes those things start coming up in those patterns again and to me it just makes me feel like home it makes me feel that quantum awareness that there's there's a reason to your existence and you have your own signature and the signature maybe has been accessed and recorded here on earth before and that has somehow managed to last. And that is so cool. And that might be a big beautiful thing that we're all getting to do, which through the amnesia is kind of that gift, that explorative gift. The amnesia is such a fascinating idea to me and how it's even possible is magnificent. And it could just be there's just so much density in this layer of waters that we live in that it's just pushing our our memories down and we can't access them or something. And eventually that's going to shift and our amnesia is going to continue to go away. And then we'll be bored again because we'll remember everything and we'll know everything. And we'll be like, oh, dang, let's how do we let entertain ourselves some more? I'm sure so. Just, uh, that's what I'm grateful for, is that I'm in a very, like, very interesting place of entertainment with the clouds, with the birds, with the trees, with our friends, with this city, with all of your cities, with all of our connections, and all of the spirit animals and literal deities and so on that I've been seeing. Ama Terasu is the god, goddess of the sun in the Japanese mythology that I was researching today. And this particular goddess had two siblings, the god of storms and the god of the moon, goddess of the moon as well. So there was three of them, the three favored children or the three special children. And their parents created the islands of Japan and were the last of the primordial gods created when heaven and earth were created. That's what I read. How beautiful is that? It was a fascinating discovery to make today. I also really enjoyed learning about psyche in Greek mythology. That one really resonated <laughs> a ton. I was like, wow. And not because she's like so beautiful which I thought was hilarious but it was just because psyche the word has followed me a very long time <laughs> but honestly I did relate and I was like okay this is very interesting <laughs> um that has yet to continue to develop in my brain space because I just realized so many of the I swear the Disney movies that I particularly liked <laughs> had had been basically copied from this Greek story, I am assuming, and who knows where the Greek story originated from either. The best part about all that. But I've gone much too deeply into this mini cast. It's kind of getting into a midi cast. I know, it's crazy, the idea. I already go on for two hours on my other live streams, so. <laughs> We're finding that space. But that's, this is the time. And I think if you've ever sat around an elder trying to tell a story, that's why we got to keep, get the nutrition in our brains, the mushroom nutrition as well. Good times. I'm going to stick my feet in the soil. 
do a breath of gratitude with you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm wishing you a fabulous week. <laughs> a lovely week. Happy, healthy heaven on earth to all of you. And may the, the gods and the deities that we all are and all know about continue to be benevolently cooperative while we drive this very large planet and learn about and somehow project ourselves and enjoy the rest of our stellar garden of Eden over here. So, wishing you the best. Onward we go. It's an honor to be of service. Have a beautiful life.